Good afternoon, friends and patriots. This is Kathy Norton here with Prophetic Intercession, and I've got a broadcast to bring to you today about some dreams and visions that I had dating back to 2012, and how God is showing me that a lot of the stuff He was showing me way back then is confirming what is happening now. So this is going to be a little bit of a an, an in-depth broadcast. So bear with me. I will try to go as fast as I can, so I don't waste a lot of your time because I understand time is very very valuable so I'm gonna start back in 2012 in September October of 2012 I went by myself to the movie theaters and I watched a movie called Obama 2016 it was a documentary uh, investigated and written and put together by a man named Dinesh D'Souza you can probably find that movie on Prime I'm not sure but you could find it on Prime or buy it on Amazon. I would suggest watching it so that you know your history. Because it turns out the movie was very, very accurate at the things that he discovered and told us all about uh, President Obama. And it found, I found this movie to be very, very disturbing. Uh, when I got home from that movie, I went for a walk and I was praying in the spirit about that movie and about the information that I learned. And God spoke a word to me. Now many times he will speak a word to me and it will be a word so far out of my vocabulary that I know he's talking and that I need to go look that word up if I don't already know what it means. And today, or that day, what he, the word he spoke to me was the word marionette. And I walked, I heard that word, I walked, I prayed, I walked, I prayed. And finally my eyes were opened up to uh, see in the spirit and I saw Barack Obama standing there with many, many puppet strings coming off of him and going up. And I did not see where they were going, but I saw them. I saw the puppet strings and I knew that he was being controlled. I also saw many people around him with puppet strings attached, but their faces were blurred. And I, again, I didn't see where the strings were headed, where they were going. Uh, so I knew that these people uh, worked in government and they all had strings attached to them though I didn't see where the strings were were headed and who was controlling those strings um, I asked the Lord as I walked and prayed about that once I saw those strings if I could cut those strings with the sword of the Spirit and he said no I could not and I understood that it was because I was still a private, uh, learning how to do these things, learning how to use the sword of the spirit, learning how to interpretate, interpret dreams, visions, and those kinds of things, and and that my my confidence in God, my faith in God, and 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 in who I am in Christ, had not been uh, solidified, and and I and I just knew that if I tried to do that and disobey God and like step outside. Uh, of my realm of authority that I would pay a pretty high price and, and I would get a lot of retribution so I I just uh, I said yes sir oh I, I won't do that well what was interesting about this uh, vision that I had with the puppet strings was a year or two later I rented a movie with Julia Roberts in it and the, and the mirror uh, the movie's called mirror mirror in that movie it's about Snow White and the evil queen usurped her authority, Snow's authority, took over the throne. And you'll have to rent the movie and watch it. But the whole thing is like storybook, uh, telling us in storybook form what was happening, what our government was doing to us, and, and the people who control the people in our government, what they were doing to us. I used to think Hollywood was prophetic, but now I realize they are owned by China. And they are literally putting these these things out there saying this is what we're doing to you we think it's entertainment and we're laughing we're thinking it's great and they're laughing at us and mocking us so watch the movie mirror mirror and and you'll definitely see some uh, parallels there um, let's see I'm just kind of going over my pages here so fast forward um, in 2012 to a week or so before the election between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama I had a dream in this dream I was standing in our back door which was downstairs my husband was coming downstairs with his um, his briefcase like 
book satchel and his guitar. He is a musician and a, and a music theory teacher. And um, he was coming downstairs. He had all his gear with him. And he asked me in the dream, he said, who won the election? And I looked at him and I said, Red wins. And I woke up from that dream the next morning and I remembered it and, and I thought about it and I thought, oh my gosh, God's just telling me that Romney's going to win the dream. The Republicans are going to win the election. The Republicans are going to win. It just seems so obvious because Romney's rallies were so full um, and much, much higher than Obama's. However, that is not what happened. And the disappointment of another four years of President Obama was devastating to me because I had already witnessed so much stuff uh, happening and our country literally being stolen from us and our economy tanking and telling us that this was the new normal. That he was bringing America down with a lot of loss, the loss of our economy, loss of jobs. Um, and after that election, I cried for three days and, and, and was just very confused about this red winds. I really I really thought he was saying that the Republicans were going to win. Um, and after three days, the father came very close to me and he comforted me. And he said, chin up, look to me, look to the hills from where your help comes from. He said, I've got this. And then he said this, Americans have not had enough. And this is key. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward again to uh, about May of 2016. I had a dream about Hillary Clinton. Um, and in this dream, I was taken to Iran as a spy. And I was hidden behind a Mediterranean lattice wall. And I could see Hillary. Uh, and she was speaking with an Ayatollah in Iran. I was holding a ledger in my hand and a pen, and as they were talking, I was writing down what I heard. I was writing down names of people, names of groups of people, and how much money they would receive. Um, in the dream, I knew I was in the presence of evil, and I knew if I was caught that I would be dead. I was absolutely terrified in the dream so terrified I had a hard time breathing and I was afraid that they would even hear me breathe from behind this wall. Now I have to tell you, I, in the dream I knew what they were saying but I couldn't actually hear what they were saying. Their, their speech was muffled and the things I was writing down was blurred so I, I, didn't, I don't remember any information. I didn't actually see it. But when I woke from this dream Before I opened my eyes, a dark figure came into my bedroom and walked to the foot of my bed and stood there staring at me. This was, I saw this figure before I opened my eyes and the father, I, I turned my heart toward him and I asked him, who is that? And he said, that is our enemy, command him to go. Well, my husband was asleep next to me in bed and, and so, um, in a whisper, I opened my mouth and I commanded the enemy to go. And I, I watched him as he just walked out the room, just like that. He just left, which is a pretty good key to let you know that authority is not found in volume. Authority is found in relationship with Christ, in relationship with the Father. And so I commanded the enemy to go in Jesus' name and he left immediately. I turned back to the father and I asked him, I said, um, what did I just see? Because why are you telling me I'm a hairdresser? <laughs> what is this all about? And I heard him speak and he quoted Luke 12, 3 to me. And this is from the New Living Translation. He said, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. When I pray for the nation, this is a scripture that I go to God with and I say to him, you promised, you promised that you would shout these crimes from the rooftops. You promised justice from 
the scriptures to me. So I'm calling this out. So um, back in 2016 again, in, in September, I had another dream about our nation. In this dream, I was in a neighborhood. It was a very uh, all-American neighborhood. The day was bright and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. It was beautiful. Um, it appeared as though I was at a like a neighborhood garage sale uh, cookout thing, and everybody was out. Uh, there were lots of people walking up and down the street, pulling wagons with their kids, pushing strollers with their kids, stopping and greeting each other, and enjoying each other's company. And I'm standing kind of inside this garage, just inside the door of this garage, and on the driveway of the house where I was at was a woman, a blonde woman, and from the back, I only saw her from the back, it appeared to be Hillary Clinton because she had her hair cut and I'm a hairdresser and I would notice that kind of stuff. And so she's sitting with her back to me and she's not sitting in a lawn chair. She's sitting in a director's chair, which in dream language tells me that whoever this person was, they were directing everything that was about to happen. So people were enjoying themselves walking up and down the street. It was a bright, beautiful, sunny day. And all of a sudden, I look off on the horizon and there's incoming aircraft. They're coming in and they're coming in low and they're coming in fast. And all of a sudden, this aircraft opened up fire on the neighborhood and they destroyed every house, every man, every woman, every child. Everything was completely obliterated by this incoming aircraft, many of them. And I looked at this woman and she's still sitting there untouched, unharmed in the drive, on the driveway, in the director's chair. And meantime, I have now run up to the front of the car, which is close to the door to the house from the garage, and I'm hiding behind this minivan. And one of these aircraft stop in the street, and they're not on the street, they're hovering above the street, this aircraft. And it's like it has eyes, it's shifting and moving and looking looking for signs of life and did it miss anything did it kill everything so when you're thinking about this think of the movie pearl harbor when those aircraft were coming in and just destroyed destroyed our our naval ships that is what i saw um and, and it destroyed everything um i got ahead of myself here give me a second when i awoke from the dream I heard the father shout in the spirit and he said the word existential again here is another word that I don't use in my everyday vocabulary and I went to look it up I googled uh, define existential and it gave me a bunch of stuff from philosophy and and just really complicated type twisted thinking that I didn't completely comprehend um, so I've not really heard from God what about this word yet, but what I find really interesting is that right after I had that dream, this phrase uh, was repeated by many in the media as well as Hillary on a daily basis. I heard it at least five times a day, and the phrase was this, that Donald Trump is an existential threat to our democracy. I can't tell you how many times I heard that. now. Were they saying that probably uh, before I had that dream? Probably, but I just didn't really notice it. But now it has a whole new meaning to me. And, and as I go along and, and pray and, and see things transpiring in our nation today, I'm like, you know what? They're absolutely right. It is an existential threat to their democracy because they want a democracy, but our nation, our constitution says we are a republic. We are not a democracy. And Donald Trump is here to restore us back to a, a republic, a nation who is a republic. So um, this dream uh, was very, very, very disturbing to me. And I, I went out that morning after I had that dream and I heard that word existential and I was praying in the spirit and I walked for about 45 minutes praying in the spirit and finally God spoke to me. And he said something so sweet and so profound and he said, and it was very comforting and it brought a lot of peace to my heart about what I had just seen. 
and he said this. He said, I hold the keys to the Electoral College. See, the big thing that I was worried about is, oh my gosh, what is gonna happen to our way of life here? What is gonna happen if Hillary Clinton becomes president? I was very, very worried about that. And God said, I hold the keys to the Electoral College. And he took me to Proverbs 21.1, and which says, the king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He guides it wherever he pleases. I knew that God was saying that he actually holds the key to every heart. See, access to the Electoral College comes through the votes of, of legitimate voters in this nation. That's where that comes from. And that he holds the key to every heart and he will direct every heart. And I believe the reason Donald Trump won the election in 2016 is not only because we prayed him in, but because he turned the hearts of many in this nation toward him toward Donald Trump. So uh, Donald Trump won that election. And um, I also want to say another scripture to you from Daniel 2, chapter, uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. Um, God has a lot to say about government and governments and kings and kingdoms. And in this scripture, it says, uh, Daniel says, Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. So you, you think about what Hillary was doing talking with an Ayatollah, making these deals, um, making uh, agreements with enemies of our nation, and then what she had in her, in her plan to do to America. I had these two dreams before the 2016 election, but it wasn't until the summer of 2018 that I felt led by the Lord to stop watching all mainstream media and in, in, I, mostly what I watched was Fox and he said just stop just stop watching all of it you're not in, getting the whole story and uh, I had heard of a man named the praying medic and so I began listening to him and I had been listening to him for just a couple of weeks and he would put out a report about oh, every other day every third day something like that and um, I really liked listening to him because he uh, the things that were happening in our nation were so emotional and so traumatic and so dramatic um, for many of us that are true patriots that those of us that could see the destruction that was going on um, and had been going on um, when you listen to these news reports from praying medic about the intelligence that's been collected on the deep state and the things that they were planning and up to, it, it, it can get very, very upsetting. And so praying medic to me is one of the best ones to listen to. He removes all the emotion, all of the hype, and he just puts the facts out there. So this one afternoon I came home and uh, I decided to just lay down and, and try to get a short rest, not necessarily a nap, but a short rest. And I, and I turned on, uh, praying medic on my phone and I was laying there listening to him talk and this was um, just after uh, John McCain passed away and praying medic did a broadcast about John McCain and his death but he also part of this prod broadcast was about something I'd never heard of and it was the 16 year plan to destroy America. So the 16 year plan was Barack Obama would set it up and then Hill, the first eight years and then Hillary would do two terms and finish the job. Uh, the whole plan that was described was so evil and so diabolical, I, I thought to myself, if this is true, the devil is truly determined to destroy our nation and then suddenly, the memory of those two dreams 
came to my mind and came to my soul like a flood and this coldness just washed over me and I just laid there and I thought to myself never in a million years would I ever believe anything that I have just heard I would never believe it but God already showed me in those dreams two years before so since that time I've been watching alternative news on YouTube and there's gonna come a time pretty soon when these shows uh, and we know praying medic uh, the matrix groove hour uh, all of these people that um, x22 report all of these people they put up very very good very reliable information on things that are being released things that are really going on in the nation uh, these things are going to be censored off of YouTube so uh, go to their websites and actually try to view on on their own website these videos so I've told you now how God confirmed my visions and dreams about puppet strings through the movie Mirror Mirror. I have told you how I heard about the 16 year plan to destroy America and it was confirmed by two dreams I had two years before I heard this information. And now I'm gonna tell you uh, back to 2012 when I said to my husband in that dream, red wins, and I thought it meant the Republicans were going to win, that Romney was going to win. And of course, we all know that that was wrong. And so a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to the Matrix Groove Show, and these two gentlemen were uh, putting out a lot of really good information, very solid information on the infiltration of China into America. And they just began to reveal all of those puppet strings from our government, from the many people in our government, from Hillary, from Barack Obama, from John McCain, from all of these people, they all led to China. China has infiltrated our nation. And, they, and as I was listening to these news reports and looking at these documents on the screen, I, I was just so sickened. And I realized what was happening and that for years, it seemed like for 15 years we were hearing about how um, how we were so indebted to China that one day very soon they would actually own us and we would no longer be a free nation. As I listened to this program, uh, one of the guys on there said the phrase rigged for red and immediately the memory of red winds, it just flooded over me and I realized what red wind, winds really means, the true meaning of it. So when I was a little girl back in the 60s and the 70s, I remembered my, my dad used to always refer to China as red China. Uh, red was always the color for communism and it was red China was uh, the, the name given to China during the Cold War. And uh, it, it was, at some point in history in the last four decades, I don't know when, but they stopped calling red China, China, and it changed to the CCP, the, the Chinese Communist Party. They stopped calling it red China. And I believe it was some time after uh, Henry Kissinger came back from uh, China and convinced the elites and the political people in DC that it would be a good thing to start trade with China and get China out onto the world stage and uh, and I think they just wanted to soften uh, things by and they stopped calling red China red China <laughs> but I still call them red China so this is what red wins means and and I believe in the 2012 election, it wouldn't have mattered who won, either Romney or Obama, because both of these guys are puppets to China. Both of them have a lot of deep strings and deep ties to China, a lot of involvement. Um, I don't know, at the time I didn't know anything about Mitt Romney's connections, but I found out just a little bit now that his, his company, Bain Capital, has a lot of connections into China. And uh, also, if you remember, in the last four years, Mitt Romney was one of the biggest political opposers 
uh, that was a Republican of Donald Trump. And it was just all very confusing. I always thought that he was such a patriot and I couldn't um, imagine why he would oppose the president and the really great things that he's been doing. In fact, he opposed him so much that he ran for the Senate so that he could oppose them. And even in the Senate, he was the only Republican senator that voted yes on Article One on the impeachment. He was the only Republican senator to do that. So I really believe Romney's hands are dirty. Barack Obama's hands are dirty. And this we need to remember, that those who scream the loudest have the most to lose. I think that Mitt Romney had a lot invested in China and he was being controlled by China. Uh, and then there's another confirmation uh, uh, that has come from POTUS himself. I've heard him say several times in his campaign for this uh, election that if Biden wins, China will own us. We're already enslaved to China. We've lost our economy to them. If you've been watching through this whole COVID thing, so many things have been exposed and revealed. The president already started in back in 2017, 2018, he started bringing jobs and companies back to America from China and from Mexico. And through the COVID thing, we've seen just um, the, the corruption coming at us from China. And just, we've just seen so much China involvement, China infiltration. And I have a question for you, patriots. And it's something that God spoke to me, and I already said this to you in the beginning of the broadcast. He told me back in 2012, Americans haven't had enough. You've been watching. Things are getting exposed out on the stage through this whole COVID thing. Things are getting exposed. Governors are being exposed for who they really are and what they really stand for. Mayors, health departments, the overreach, have you had enough? I'm asking you right now, have you had enough? Are you ready to take back your authority? I'm not telling you any of these things to cause fear, but to remind you that God has been talking to me and many other prophetic people about this stuff for years and what he's done for me. I feel no shame about misinterpreting the red winds thing. I don't think he ever meant for me to interpret it. I just jumped the gun. The reason he told me that eight years ago was to confirm to me what's going on now, that China is our problem and that the deep state in, in DC has been the problem and they are all beholden to China. So God sees, he sees now and he saw then, he knows the beginning and the end He's the Alpha and the Omega. He chose Trump for this assignment. Trump was born for such a time as this. He is fulfilling his assignment, but we have an assignment too. We have an assignment too. We need to do our part and vote. And if you've not registered, do so now. For all of you who live in states where, and cities where there has been extreme overreach and power grab, where your leaders, where your health departments have been absolutely drunk on power. California is a really good example of this. Uh, Governor Newsom is absolutely drunk on power. Uh, even now, as his state burns, they have captured Antifa. Uh, so they've uh, arrested several people that are members of Antifa, Antifa setting fire to the state of California. And even though that's going on and it's legit and it's real news, he has the audacity to stand in front of the camera and tell Americans that these fires are caused by global warming. It's just a bunch of horse hockey. So going back to taking your power back, have you registered? And if you're in a state where there's a big, big power grab, you know who these people are. And if these people are on the ballot, it's time for you to vote them out. Take your power back. If there is a recall on an election of any of these people, 
Like there's a recall on Gavin Newsom. There's a recall on Mayor Quinton Lucas in Kansas City. There are recalls on, uh, I think the mayor of Seattle or Portland, one of them. Um, you need to get involved in that recall. You need to sign the petition and you need to change the leadership. And you need to start voting for people who would defend the Constitution, who will keep their word and keep their oath and defend the Constitution and their constituents. Listen, just like in the garden, the enemy came and stole the authority that God gave to Adam and Eve in that garden. He lied to them and he took the truth and he twisted it just enough to get them to doubt God and his word and his character. He said, God doesn't want you to eat this fruit from this tree because he knows you'll be like him. But what the Adam and Eve forgot is they were already like God. We are all already like God because we were made in his image. And America's founding fathers, it's much the same. They set up our, our government, our constitution, so that the government is accountable to us. We the people, we have the authority. They answer to us. They are the public servants servants but somehow over time they decided to change that from public servant to public official and i don't know when that started but that needs to change they are public servants and they need to remember that they serve at our pleasure and so it's time to vote these people out that have been exposed through this whole covid thing these people that insist on uh the the overreach and the power grab um, acting as if a, a, health, a mandate from the health department is a law when it's not. It is a suggestion. It is a recommendation. It is not a law. I know that in California, my brother who lives there has told me that if, if you are caught in public without a mask, it is an automatic $500 fine. Talk about overreach. There it is right there. We can no longer be complacent. If we are going to walk in our authority in the spirit, we can't be complacent. We have to be proactive. We have to live our life on the offense and take our authority over the enemy immediately. And it's the same here in America. We have to get on the offense. We have to stop being complacent. So that means we get involved, we register to vote, we go and we vote, we volunteer to uh, uh, on election day at the election polls we do our part we do our part and i have just one more thing i want to say to christians who do not support donald trump and i say this um i just say this in love i just want to say that your opposition to a president who is so fully pro-life and so fully pro-american and pro economy and pro Israel it's ridiculous it is ridiculous and if you want to oppose Donald Trump because he has a past then I suggest to you and I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious here but I'm trying to make a point if you oppose Donald Trump for his past then I suggest that you stop reading the Psalms that King David wrote because he was an adulterous murderer. I suggest that you stop reading Paul's epistles because he was a murderer as well. And I suggest that you not read the book of Matthew because he was a greedy tax collector. I don't mean to sound harsh and that's not my point. My point is this, the entire Bible is about God fulfilling his purposes in men and women who have fallen short of his glory. And I believe that would be all of us. All of us have fallen short, but God, but God provided Jesus, the lamb. He shed his blood, his blood that cleanses us and makes us righteous and gives us the robe of righteousness that we can walk and fulfill our calling and not fall short of his glory anymore because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The blood is the game changer. The blood is the pivot. It changes everything. And let me just tell you something. 
If you don't approve of Donald Trump because of his past, we all have a past. I just ask you to pray for him. Pray that God would encounter him. Here's what I what I have noted, uh, what I have seen over the last three and a half years. I have seen a, a man who has been changed. This is a man who gave up billions of dollars because he loved his nation. And he takes hits every day on all sides. And believe you me, if they get past him, they're coming for you and they're coming for me. And they absolutely mean business. So we need to pray for Donald Trump. We need to pray for his family. We need to pray God gives him wisdom. Have you had enough? Do you have 2020 vision? Have you seen enough? Have you seen enough going on to see the corruption? It's overwhelming. Yes, I know. But we need to back our president. We need to do our part. And we need to pray for him. Donald Trump is doing the constitutional thing by not interfering in these states where they have have not invited the federal government in. That is the constitutional thing to do. At some point, he is going to know when to pull the trigger and when to send in the troops and stop all this nonsense. At some point, this is going to happen. So we need to pray that Donald Trump hears the timing of God's heart because God knows the perfect time. So let's pray right now. Father, we just thank you for America. We thank you for Donald Trump. We thank you for our president. We bless him. We bless him. And we ask that you would speak to him in all manner of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. That you would uh, speak to Donald Trump and, and, and give him that profound sense of divine timing that every trigger would be pulled at the right moment. And Father, uh, we just declare and decree that we will be set free from China, that all strings will be cut, that our president has the authority to cut all of those strings from China. And I thank you for the authority that you have put into his hand. And we pray for the people of China that they would be set free from this oppressive government. We pray for the church, the hidden church in China, the underground church in China, that this is their moment, that they would rise up and take their place and lead this nation to freedom in the name of Jesus. Well, that's it. That's all I have for you guys. Thanks and have a great day and have a great evening. God bless you.